Well, welcome. Is everybody ready? Everybody turned on? Well, y'all, this is <clears throat> this is the second of our regularly scheduled press conferences. We hope to have one at this time of day, two o'clock approximately, for the duration. Uh, we have several uh, people who will speak to you briefly, but also we'd like to start with John Quarello from the National well Weather Service to give us an update on the hurricane. John. Thank you, Governor. Currently, Hurricane Irma is a dangerous Category 5 storm with winds of 175 miles per hour. It's passing north of the Dominican Republic. Irma will continue to track between the Bahamas and Cuba as a major hurricane through Saturday. Irma is forecast to turn northward Saturday night, then pass along the east coast of Florida Sunday and Sunday night. By Monday morning, there could be some weakening as Irma passes just off the Georgia coast, but Irma is forecast to remain a major hurricane prior to making landfall somewhere along the Georgia or South Carolina coast late Monday or Monday night. Irma is then expected to move northwest across South Carolina while weakening, but even remaining a tropical storm as it moves into the upstate of South Carolina. One thing to remember, changes in track and intensity forecast should be expected as Irma is still four days away from making any potential landfall. In terms of impacts, residents and visitors should prepare for significant impacts from Hurricane Irma. Destructive winds are possible along the coast, with potential for winds strong enough to cause damage to trees, power lines, and structures well inland throughout the state. This will result in widespread and possible long-duration power outages. Dangerous storm surge inundation could occur, especially in areas along and east of where the hurricane makes landfall. In these areas, storm surge inundation could cover most barrier islands and even penetrate well inland. Significant amounts of rainfall are possible, especially closer to the coast, and could result in flash flooding. We also want to watch for the potential for river flooding next week as well. Please take this time now to prepare for these potential impacts to the state and follow the advice of local emergency management. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Corello, National Weather Service? Sir, can you talk about rainfall and how it compares to the October flood or even Hurricane Matthew last year? Yeah, the, the good news with this storm, it's going to be fairly quick moving. So while we will have um, high rainfall amounts in some areas of the state, we could see in local amounts over 10 inches of rain in some parts of the state, the storm is not going to sit in one spot for a long time. So it's going to move through. So we can expect to see some localized flooding, but we don't think to the extent of what we saw back in October of 2015 or even last year with Hurricane Matthew. So winds will be the, the biggest threat then? Uh, storm surge along the coast will be a, a big factor. This is going to be a major hurricane potentially making landfall. And then the winds, yes, the hurricane force winds. And the one thing to remember, these strong winds are going to extend all the way inland throughout the state, where if you look at, you know, uh, Matthew last year, those winds were really focused for coastal areas. So we're going to see those wind impacts farther inland. How significant do you think the wind impact will be, let's say, if the hurricane is at least the strength of Hugo in the Midlands and maybe even in upstate? Yeah, I, I think it's certainly possible, depending on the track and the strength of storm when it makes landfall, that we could see at least hurricane force wind gusts all the way here in the Midlands mm -hmm. and certainly tropical storm force winds even in the upstate of South Carolina. So that would be certainly enough to produce some damage. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> we might have something in a minute. Uh, I want to uh, uh, thank the our, our team here in South Carolina. We've talked about this before. We've had a lot of had a lot of practice with these things, and we're we're as prepared as we can be. And but we're still concerned that, that we want the people to be sure to get prepared. That's the main message that we can deliver: is be prepared and and start now. Just imagine that this hurricane will be here in the morning and do what you need to do right away before something ends up taking a lot of your time and interrupts your preparations and you don't have time to do it because it is coming. Uh, just so you'll know, we have uh, a lot of talent, a lot of people organized, prepared, and trained to respond and to help keep the citizens and property safe in South Carolina. We have 2,358 state and local law enforcement officers on duty for the evacuation. South Carolina National Guard under General Livingston. Today we have 800 on duty on Sunday. 
We'll have 2,500, that's 2,500 on Tuesday. There'll be 5,000 National Guard troops out there to keep people safe and secure. We will have 200 Red Cross shelters if needed. We'll also have 2,900 Department of Social Services and Red Cross personnel available. We also, with South Carolina Department of Transportation, will have 1,200 Department of Transportation maintenance per personnel working the evacuation routes. So you'll see military uniforms, police uniforms, you'll see a lot of uniform personnel all along these roads, particularly at the uh, the exits, the entrances to the highways, the intersections to tell everyone uh, where to go if there's any question. But one thing we urge people to do is look up your evacuation route. Find out where it is that you're supposed to go depending on the part of the state you're in. We're roughly divided into three different regions. The southern region is down around Beaufort and Jasper and then you get up to the middle region around Charleston and up towards Georgetown and then Georgetown and on up to Ori is the, is the northern region and all of those have certain routes, certain roads that have been designated as evacuation routes and those are the roads that you should take no matter what they say on Google or anything else follow those evacuation signs and one of those signs is right there that's what it looks like and they're the same everywhere all over the state if you're on one of those roads from wherever you are, one of those highways, you're in the right place. And you'll see at intersections, you'll see uniformed personnel, you'll see vehicles, and they will be there to assist as well. But what we want to do is people to understand where they're supposed to go, how they get from where they are to getting on, on up to the upstate <coughs> and try to move briskly and understand where you're going before you start. So now is the time to do that. Uh, this is a, this map depicts some of these roads. Uh, it'll be, uh, we'll, we'll have more explanation about that in a, mi in a minute. But those are the ones to follow. Also, we will at some point, we will have a reversal of lanes on, uh, on I-26 and we will also have reversal of lanes around Myrtle Beach and also around Beaufort for a few miles there, but uh, I-26 will be reversed all the way from Charleston up un until uh, I-77 in Columbia. And that, that will take place, uh, at, we believe, at about 10 o'clock on, on Saturday morning, uh, at which time that would be the same time that if things are going as they're going now without much change, that will be the time that the evacuation order which I will issue will take place will be effective that is as of 10 o'clock this Saturday morning I've issued an executive order today requiring the owners of 2370 public and private dams in South Carolina to immediately begin lowering the water levels as necessary to accommodate heavy rain levels what that means under the law is they should go examine the dams, understand that rain is coming, make a decision as to how much water should be left in that, uh, behind that dam, and lower it appropriately. And if that is not done, uh, we have the authority for DHEC to go and help them do it and do it themselves if, they, if the owners refuse to do it or are not able to do it. On health care facilities, I've issued an executive order today requiring the evacuation of facilities along the coast in the potential impact zones along the coast. This is nursing homes, health care facilities from Hurricane Irma as of 2 o'clock today. That order takes effect as of 2 o'clock today. Where are those? What counties are they in? Those facilities, health care facilities, are located in the counties of Jasper, Beaufort, Colleton, Dorchester, Charleston, Berkeley, Georgetown, and Ori. I'll repeat them. The counties of Jasper, Beaufort, Colleton, Dorchester, Charleston, Berkeley, Georgetown, and Ori. That is where the health care facilities need to begin evacuation as of 2 o'clock today, which is just passed. What is a health care facility? A health care facility includes hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, 
alcohol and substance abuse hospitals and other similar types which are listed in the executive order. I'll say it again. Those health care facilities include hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, alcohol and substance abuse hospitals, and other similar types which are listed in the executive order. As I mentioned, I intend to issue an evacuation order which will take place as things now stand at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. It is also at that time that the lane reversals on I-26 and several of the other roads in the other zones will have their lane reversals beginning to be in effect. And that means you will not be able to get on the road at the, at the end at which the traffic is flowing. And all the lanes will be going in one direction. Also, it's likely that I will announce tomorrow that schools and government offices will be closed on Monday, September the 11th and Tuesday, September the 12th in some or all of the 46 counties in the state. Again, I will announce tomorrow, it's likely, it's likely that schools and state government offices will be closed on Monday, September the 11th. Remember, we're expecting the storm to we start feeling some strong winds on Sunday evening, Sunday night, and we expect to feel the full brunt of it on Monday. So we expect to close those schools on Monday, September the 11th, and Tuesday, September the 12th, in some or all of the counties. Why would we close the schools away from the coast on up and towards the upstate? That's because we're going to have a lot of people trying to get away from the coast and to go to the Midlands and the upstate. So we can't have school buses and children and a lot of traffic there. We're trying to clear it out as much as we can to allow this flow of traffic to go unimpeded. And there's one other thing to remember. Since 1999, we've not had a hurricane come to South Carolina after first traveling up the coast from Florida through Georgia and then to us. What that means is we are already experiencing Except, uh, additional high levels of traffic from those states coming into our state to escape the storm and to, to get to uh, safer ground. So as that storm proceeds on, there'll be more and more people from Georgia and from Florida coming through South Carolina, which will add to the burden on our highways. So what we urge everyone to do is get prepared. Uh, if, you, if you can leave now, uh, go ahead and but, but be sure, as we tell everybody, be prepared. Remember to put your important papers, particularly insurance papers. If you have insurance on your home, you might want to have those papers handy. Any valuable photographs, photograph albums, valuables. Remember to turn off the stove. Do a lot of simple things like that as you leave your home. Remember your pets have food, medicine uh, for yourself, but also for your pets. Have leashes for your pets. Inform your relatives of where you plan to go. Lock your house, apartment, business. Be sure to have your credit cards, any kind of identification you think you may need. And remember, we do not know when you will be able to come back to your home or your office. But until it is declared safe to do so by the local authorities, and we will alert you to that as well, you will not be allowed to go back to your home or your office. So lock it up tight and leave and be sure to take what you must have uh, with you. We are informed by the Petroleum Association about gas supply. Uh, there may be some spot shortages, temporary shortages, but we do not think we could run out of gas. The stations are being resupplied. The worst thing that we can do is panic and everybody run out and get more gas and fill up a lot of containers and things that they're really not going to need. If we have a deliberate but constant process that is set out by the uh, by these signs and by the directions and the instructions and information that we'll be disseminating we ought to be able to have a good orderly process that will uh, keep us all uh, safe and secure and, and protect our property so that's uh, that's the, the beginning of this message does anyone have any questions for me before we go farther yes I'm un unclear or have you actually ordered an evacuation or are you no ma'am okay not yet. Just about okay. purpose. You're right, but, but you said 10 a.m. Saturday. What That's right. 
that is if I order an evacuation, that is the time at which it will go into effect at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. And Saturday morning. Same thing for the reversal of the roads. Will that be a mandatory evacuation? Yes, ma'am. And the coastal counties that you listed that are already ordered for health care facilities, right. would those be the counties that would be impacted by the 10 a.m. evacuation on Saturday, or would it be more of the state? No, the, 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 that will be described fully uh, later, but we, we will have to judge the storm or uh, it would probably be unlikely in response to your question from somebody from Oconee County to, to evacuate. But Governor, you're yes, talking sir. about funneling people away from the storm into Columbia and the upstate. Is there any concern that the track could come up to Columbia and on up to the upstate? Because <coughs> those very people are trying to get away? Yes, sir, there is. That's why we're urging people to, to go ahead and go right now if you can. Go as soon as you can. I mean, they can. there's no uh, prohibition in the law for somebody to leave right now. Before we go too far, maybe some of these others will answer some of these questions uh, as we as we go forward. Um, General Livingston. Uh, the governor talked about uh, the uh, movement of personnel. Just want to kind of give you a summary of that. Uh, we have uh, activated 800 National Guardsmen to do planning and to assist the Highway Patrol and DO2 in, in lane reversal at traffic control points. Uh, in addition to uh, that force, uh, we are planning on bringing on other forces uh, into the state, not just National Guard, but uh, reaching out to other states through our EMAC agreements uh, to bring in rescue teams, uh, to bring in logistical teams, uh, shortfalls that we may have uh, with a category three to four hurricane. And we will plan for, this This should be a category three or less, but we will plan for a category four as far as resources. So we will already identify those resources. Uh, within the state, uh, we are moving resources starting tomorrow uh, to prepare for evacuation of the shoreline uh, and to assist citizens. We will then continue to deploy forces uh, forward to help with recovery efforts as we anticipate what the storm is going to do. And those, uh, so you'll see a lot of different forces, uh, military forces. We have uh, contacted the Department of Defense, Northern Command. Uh, we have access to federal forces, federal military forces, as well as civilian and other agencies uh, from states around us. So uh, we, we are planning, like I said, for a category four storm uh, and, and we should be well prepared from the state perspective. Thank you, General. Secretary Hall. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> As the Governor mentioned, we are starting to see the impacts of our neighboring states' uh, traffic flowing this way. I-95 in particular, we're starting to see some very heavy traffic flows on that section of interstate coming out of the Georgia area. Our travel speeds on I-95 near the Georgia border or somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So it is congested currently moving up uh, towards the Columbia area uh, going forward across the state. We're seeing similar uh, delays on the I-20 and I-85 corridors coming in again from the Georgia area. We've estimated that approximately 27,000 additional vehicles have entered uh, the state from the I-95 area above and beyond what our historical numbers have been since midnight on Tuesday. As the governor mentioned, it's imperative that you prepare for your trip uh, whenever you uh, evacuate the area, food, fuel, medicine, etc. We ask that you be patient. As we already mentioned, the, the, there is congestion on some of the roads currently. There will be heavy traffic and it will be slow moving uh, in, in some of these areas. But we are preparing to assist motorists move through the area with signage, uh, folks directing traffic, uh, signal adjustments, looking at uh, message boards. We've uh, moved forward with implementing comfort stations, which means water and additional uh, uh, restroom facilities at our rest areas all across the state in order to accommodate the increase. We also intend to deploy our uh, state highway emergency <coughs> patrol units, our SHEP units, to assist uh, motorists as we go along throughout the, uh, the event, 
case there's a breakdown or any other issue that a motorist needs to help get out of the uh, way of the traffic and or get to the next stop. Um, again, as the governor mentioned, use your designated evacuation route. Mm -hmm. This plan is only going to work for us if it's dispersed traffic. So know your map, understand which route is closest to you and makes the best sense to get out of the area. And you can view those either at the SCEMD website or the SCDOT website, which is also linked on the EMD page. I encourage South Carolinians to uh, sign up for our 511 app. And also, we have resources available at our 1-800 number, which is 1-855-GO-SCDOT, which is 1-855-467-2368. And we will be more than happy to provide personalized travel assistance to any, any person in our state. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Smith. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as the Governor mentioned earlier, uh, we have over 2,300 uh, law enforcement officers and South Carolina <coughs> National Guard personnel uh, assisting with our evacuation efforts. Uh, the Governor also mentioned earlier about the uh, regional evacuation zones. We have three. Uh, the uh, northern zone in the Horry County area, uh, the central zone coming out of Charleston, and the southern zone in the Beaufort County area. Uh, uh, I could not uh, overstate the importance of following uh, your evacuation zones. Please know uh, your evacuation zones. Uh, you can go to the EMD website, the SCDOT website, the SCDPS website, and it will forward you to a link to the EMD website. Those zones are designed not to interfere with the other regional uh, evacuation zones. They are designed to get you at least 100 miles inland to get you to a place uh, of uh, refuge. Uh, in addition to our local evacuation zones, we have four lane reversal uh, uh, routes. And the governor mentioned it earlier. We plan to do that uh, Monday, I'm sorry, Saturday morning. Uh, those four routes are US uh, 501 in the uh, Ori County area, I-26, in Charleston, as the governor mentioned, from Charleston to Columbia, uh, US 21 in Beaufort County, uh, as well as uh, that's um, Beaufort, and US 278 in Hilton Head. Uh, again, please uh, follow your uh, evacuation orders. Uh, I would like to direct your attention to this sign here. Uh, uh, please, uh, if your area is designated to evacuate, please follow that sign and not this, not the cell phone, not the GPS. Those things could change. Uh, uh, GPS could take you to an area that is not designated as an evacuation route. So please follow uh, the evacuation sign and not the GPS. And on a final note, just three points again. One, uh, please know your evacuation zone. Uh, two, please be patient. We know that our roads will probably face uh, maximum capacity. It's going to take longer than normal to get to your destination, so be, please be careful. And third, please be prepared. Uh, the governor mentioned some things before. Make sure you have a full tank of gas, uh, a cell phone with a charged battery, water, supplies for the kids, uh, 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 medicines, uh, and, and so forth. Just please be prepared. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. And on, for example, on uh, I-26, with the, when the lanes are reversed, if you're on the the west side, you may not be able to see the signs indicating what is available at that exit. So we're going to try to have the uh, signage out there to to uh, reflect that. But uh, you need to need to be aware that it uh, you'll have to be on the lookout for that because, as you know already, they they don't have uh, filling stations and food and restrooms at every exit anyway. But if you're on the wrong side, on the west side of I-26, and you're he headed on to Columbia and points north, you may not be able to see those signs. You're certainly not going to be able to get to those exits on the right-hand side of the road. So you'd be going up the, the wrong way on the exit that used to come in to the southbound uh, or, or eastbound lanes. So just, just be aware to, that you're going to need to be on the lookout. We'll try to have plenty of signage out there. But again, to, to for what the director public safety uh, Leroy Smith said those signs ha have stood the test of time they work those routes work they've been tested the roads are clear they've been uh, ridden recently to be sure that they're all open clear everything's on them working no obstructions 
and if, if, if we follow those signs, and you'll still have to be a little patient even on all of those roads, all of the, a lot of them. Uh, be patient and follow those signs and, and you'll be safe because there'll be regular patrol, there'll be officers, uh, military and law enforcement uh, all up and down these routes that have been selected as evacuation routes and, and including I-26, they'll be all over the place. If you get off on some other road somewhere, you might be out there by yourself and, and stuck with a, a tree or a high water or something else and you might not be able to get back where you want to go. So uh, just stick, we've got a great plan. Uh, your team in South Carolina has done a fine job in preparation and we're about as ready as we can be on, on this side, but we want the citizens to be prepared. Start now, start thinking about what you're going to do, and get yourself ready to go, and go as soon as you can. If, if, if this storm doesn't dramatically change direction and go out to sea, we're going to have to be evacuating, uh, certainly no, no later than early Saturday morning. So uh, are there any more questions? How yes, long will lane reversals last? Uh, yes. Sir. Well, uh, one thing that we don't want is to put our responders in harm's way. So, worst case scenario, we will de demobilize well before the onset of tropical storm force winds because, as we know, we don't want to, again, put our uh, responders in peril. And we need to retrieve that equipment for not only the next event, uh, but for uh, the post, uh, post landfall response. What that means is these people are not going to be out there when it's the full blast of the hurricane. They will be gone just like everybody else. So that's why we have. To, that's why we have to start now. How many health facilities and patients are impacted? Any idea? Where's the DHEC, Mr. Wilson? Thank you, Governor. Mr. Wilson uh, from DHEC. There are 143 inpatient health care facilities in the counties in evacuation zones that have been identified in the order uh, that the governor has issued today. Any idea how many patients? Uh, I'll have to find that number and get to you. I don't have that with me. Any special measures are taking to get those patients out? We are, we are contacting and working with each one of those facilities. They all have a plan for evacuation. We're in contact with them as they implement those plans. Has DHEC recently evaluated those plans to ensure that, for example, they don't all have the same, you know, transportation service contracted to take patients to safety? We, we work closely with the transportation facilities, uh, entities as well, to make sure that those are available. It's for someone else, but do we have an update on the mass transportation plan this time? Buses to the coast? Mr. Kim Stumpson. We're, uh, we have, uh, the governor authorized us to execute the contract for that. Uh, so we're working with the counties <laughs> to find out exactly what their needs are. We could be talking about as many as 10,000 people being transported through that system. Uh, and that'll be uh, refined over the next uh, day or so in terms of that. Um, for, I, I was contacted today by somebody who wanted to know how to get his brother out of Myrtle Beach. Who should folks contact if they need a ride and want to evacuate? They should uh, talk to their local emergency managers. And they can find all that information on your yeah, website? Yeah, our website has all the contact information. And it all, and as has been mentioned before, we've got all the, the Know Your Zone information on there. People can type in their address and, and work through that process. And if you forget that, call the sheriff. Right. And Governor, you, could you clarify you exactly what you're ordering 10 o'clock Saturday morning? What evacuations are being ordered <coughs> well the exact geographic location we don't know because we don't know the strength of the storm we know it's going to be strong but we don't know how strong the other thing that we don't know we don't know how many people we're going to have coming through in addition to the people that are already in south carolina that's totally unknown we know that it's up uh the traffic on i-95 yesterday was up about 40 percent so they're, they're, those are two unknowns we have a lot more people on the roads and that's going to slow things down and also, we don't know how strong the, the storm is going to be and, and uh, what uh, areas of the state will be under the mandatory evacuation. But what that means is as of, as of Saturday, 10 o'clock, assuming that is the time in which the evacuation, mandatory evacuation order goes into effect, you need to, you need to start getting on out. But it would be coastal counties to start, or are you well, looking more be at It least, would at least coastal counties, and it may be more than that. We'll, we'll have the, the order or uh, prepared reflecting the best information at the time of where the where the trouble is going to be influenced by the storm 
And you're still thinking you'll make that call tomorrow? We'll be studying, yes, we'll, but we'll, we'll be thinking and gathering information uh, right up until the time we issue the order. Governor, have you talked to Governor Deal and, and Governor Scott uh, about coordinating at all in terms of, as you talked about, you know, the I-95 uh, up, uptick mm -hmm. in traffic? Is there anything being done with Florida I've talked, and Georgia? I, I've, I've, talked to go, I've talked to Governor, Governor Scott. I've not talked to Governor Deal. Um, but I know there's been a lot of communication between these offices and, and the other offices. Uh, is there anything being done to try to to try to try uh, mitigate the amount of, of traffic that is on I-95? Well, they're doing a lot of the same things we're doing, Rick Smith. Uh, yeah, we've been coordinating with uh, Georgia State Patrol, and, and historically, uh, with respect to our plans, we try not to uh, send traffic south on I-95. We do not like to to uh, interfere with their evacuation efforts, and we ask them to evacuate their traffic west, uh, uh, preferably on the, the I-16, just in the uh, the uh, uh, Savannah area. So if they evacuate west, uh, we would not evacuate south to uh, interfere with their efforts, and uh, hopefully the, their efforts won't interfere interfere with ours. Is your understanding that that is now happening or will happen in the future? Uh, you know, it has Georgia. Have Georgia and Florida started to ask their residents to evacuate west as opposed to up I-95? Well, again, uh, they can ask their uh, uh, residents to evacuate west. Uh, that doesn't always mean that they will do that. Uh, we can ask our uh, residents not to evacuate south. That doesn't mean that they're going to uh, heed to those warnings. But generally, that's the game plan for us not to evacuate south and for them to evacuate west. So we're not interfering with each other's evacuation efforts. I have a storm surge question. At the I, worst case scenario, how much do we think the storm surge could be? Uh, that's uh, kind of difficult to answer this far out. Um, potential is there for significant storm surge. I think we prefer to leave it at that until we have a better idea of the track and the intensity of the storm as it approaches the coast. But we'll be working very closely with the National Hurricane Center over the next day or two to come up with good, reliable numbers that people can expect. But can tell you if it is a major hurricane making landfall anywhere where the eye makes landfall or to the right of the, uh, of the landfall point would, would experience some significant storm surge, which again could extend well inland from the coast in some locations. And that to the right, he's speaking as if you were out in the ocean looking Correct. At so if it makes landfall in the southern part of the state, anywhere up the South Carolina coast, would have the greatest impact from the storm surge because the winds are moving onshore in those locations. And it also depends a little bit on whether it's high tide or low tide. There is a full moon out there, so that, that increases the uh, depth. Hey, Governor, have you spoken to the President yet, and is there an update on the, the disaster declaration? Uh, no, I've spoken to the Chief of Staff, General Kelly, and they are well aware of our situation. Could this be a full coastal evacuation rather yes, than partial? Yes, ma'am. As far as the shelters go, uh, you mentioned that the that they'll open as soon as any evacuation order takes place. So are we looking at sometime Friday that the shelters might be open, timed with the announcement of an evacuation order, or will it be Saturday morning at 10 a.m.? Well, a lot of the shelters that will be in the schools, so of course they can't start until the schools are, are, are empty. Uh, so that would uh, depend on the, the local speed that they can uh, accomplish, but we expect them to start open, uh, many of them to be open on Saturday. On Saturday. More questions? Yes, sir. Um, for Secretary Hall, what shape are the roads in to take all this additional traffic and water? Well, as far as the traffic goes, we're, we're <coughs> constantly monitoring that. We have real-time data on our road. Uh, traffic volumes, speeds, and the number of vehicles on our interstate facilities and our major routes. So we're constantly monitoring that and looking to uh, mitigate those, mitigate those, any kind of j traffic jams as quickly as possible. Um, so we're looking at that real time road conditions. I mean, they are what they are at this point in time. And so uh, as the governor and uh, Director Smith mentioned, we have gone out and looked at all the uh, evacuation routes, make sure that the roads are in all passable condition, good condition, and uh, we've restricted any kind of uh, road work on these uh, particular routes going forward. So the, the lanes should be clear and open and ready to receive the traffic. I have a uh, wind question. For those that are inland, 
Should there be any concern for those that may be living in mobile homes or structures that may not, may not be as sound as brick or anything else? I think the local emergency managers would be best to um, give advice on that, but I will say, uh, you know, there is a, a, a threat for some strong, potentially hurricane force wind gusts well inland, and we haven't seen that in quite some time here in the state. So, um, you know, generally people shelter and protect themselves from the wind, don't evacuate from the wind, but if you're, you know, obviously feel you're in an unsafe location, then you might need to consider going elsewhere. But uh, the winds will be a factor. I think the biggest issue we need to worry about is trees and power lines that are all going to be coming down and then potential uh, power outages that might result from that. And it could be fairly widespread, and we could be talking some long-duration power outages if, if the, you know, the hur hurricane or even tropical storm force winds are as extensive as we're expecting. Now, I'd like to remind people, once, once the wind has gone away and the water has subsided, that does not mean that everybody will be able to go home or go to their office because you have power lines down, you have roads blocked, no telling uh, what uh, sort of situation there'll be. So we are relying on part of our team here in South Carolina, that's, that's the, 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 the county sheriffs and the, the local uh, management people to provide the information uh, along with the information we have to see when the all clear can, can be given. But that's one more reason to take what you need with you uh, have it with you uh, because we don't know when we'll, we'll be able to go home. Do you have any idea the number of hospitals um, in the evacuation zones and, and uh, how the process will go for that? Mr. Wilson? I do not have the exact number of hospitals. Okay. Uh, again, we'll be working, contacting each one of them about their evacuation plan and uh, what they intend to do and how they'll be moving their patients. So wait a minute, the 143 that you mentioned earlier, what did that? That included serve? hospitals, uh, uh, nursing homes. Uh, oh, that's everybody. It, that's everybody, okay. yes. All well, those, that, I'm sorry, all those that had inpatients. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. That's me. all right. More questions? Where are we at on the evacuation timeline in terms of our, maybe Director Stenson would know? Yes. We're, according to our plan, we're, we're right on track right now. So uh, one of the things we'll do tomorrow is the State Emergency Operations Center will move to uh, OPCON 3 and will be fully activated. Uh, but according to our plan, we're right on, right on schedule. So we're clear. When you, you plan to call for the evacuations, would you do that tomorrow at this time or would that be Saturday morning? We'll wait and see when we have the best information because we want to base that on all the facts, all the information we have at, at the time, but we're confident that, uh, not 99% sure, I would say, 99% sure that it will take effect at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Governor, may I say yes, something sir. about that? General? Uh, the, the evacuation is timed so that there is enough time to completely evacuate all the necessary people in the allotted time. So. Uh, we, what we do is we take the onset of winds and back it up is basically 48 hours, uh, two full daylight periods. And uh, so that's kind of how we, we get on that Saturday morning piece and that takes us through Sunday. Uh, that, and then you're looking at the tropical force winds sometime early uh, Monday morning uh, and uh, then, then that's when we start closing those lanes. So it gives you an idea that there's plenty of time to evacuate, you, but if you want to get out early, that's not a bad idea either. General Livingston, uh, you said yesterday uh, that the responders who had gone to Texas were coming back. Have they all arrived back now? Are they all in South Carolina? Uh, all of our responders are back except a small control cell. Uh, we have also a, a piece that we don't always see is that uh, we have troops that are deployed into combat uh, in Afghanistan and other places. We are replacing them with light troops from other unaffected states. So as far as our capabilities, uh, we're basing our requirements on what the storm requirements are, not what we happen to have in state. If we don't have it, we're bringing it from an unaffected state. Governor, is there any concern at the f uh, federal level, given everything that's still going on in terms of the recovery efforts with Harvey, um, given you know how this is going to affect several states along the coast, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, uh, about the amount of resources that the federal government has to be addressing all of these different situations at once? No, sir. 
Any more questions? Thank you for coming.